Hello and welcome back to goldstocktrades.com. Today we have a new and special guest with us, Ben Whiting. Ben is Vice President of Exploration at Dolly Varden Silver, which can be traded as DV on the TSX Venture and as DOLLF on the US OTC. Thanks, Ben, for being here with us today and for giving us an introduction into Dolly Varden Silver. It's my pleasure to join you here today. It's an exciting time for Dolly Varden Silver. I understand you're currently in a drilling exploration program. Talk to us about the location where Dolly Varden is located. I understand there's some major mines there, such as the SK Creek mine and the uh, and the Bruce Jack mine, the Valley of the Kings uh, deposit. Talk to us about the lo- the importance of this location where you're exploring for silver. Yes, uh, the area often is referred to as the Golden Triangle. The Golden Triangle in northwestern British Columbia has some major deposits that are currently either in development stages or exploration stages, past producers. And we are at the southern tip of that triangle on the Dolly Varden property where we have a silver resource and we have a lot of neighbors who also have um, very favorable mineral properties currently under development. And I guess there, because there's so many mines up there, there's infrastructure. Can you talk to us a little bit about the infrastructure around the Dolly Varden property? Okay. The infrastructure right where we are is uh, there's a fjord, an inlet that comes in from the Pacific to a small community referred to as Alice Arm near Kitsalt. From there, there is a 25-kilometer road that heads straight north onto the property. Let's. Dolly Varden has a known mineral resource. Could you update us on what is currently known about the properties that Dolly Varden has? Yes, uh, you think of it also in terms of being a past producer. In uh, 1919, just after the First World War, it opened up as a, as a very high-grade silver mine where they built a railway from the coast into the project, a narrow-gauge railway. Um, other parts of the property were also in production in the 1940s and 1950s. Today, uh, we have a resource that is uh, 43101 compliant, so according to the codes of reporting, of approximately 42 million ounces of silver in four uh, discrete uh, ore bodies. But that's not the end of the story. That is just the position we are at at present. Uh, On the property, there are over 50 targets for further exploration. So, Ben, let's discuss some of the exploration program that you're working on currently um, I understand that really there's only been a certain a small percentage of the 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 assets that have been explored have, that have been explored on. That that's true. Um, the the favorable horizon for mineralization and the number of showings uh, tell us that there is a lot more going on. That the alteration that we see as geologists looking at the rocks suggests that there is a lot of fluid flow bringing mineralization into this area. We are doing a combination drilling program this year. We'll be drilling some that are right next to known mineral deposits. So uh, the drill rig, as we speak today, is located on the Torbert deposit. Uh, But we will also be testing some of the targets that have not been drilled before. Um, The one that I'm looking forward to for testing this year is the uh, Copper Ridge uh, property, um, it's part of the Dolly Varden, and as you head towards the northwest, um, you're in the same stratigraphy as the discoveries that were made by Orin on the uh, Homestake Ridge. So they have some resources that are in gold and silver on that property. The same geology and types of showings exist on the Dolly Varden property, and it's our intention to drill that this summer as well. And there's been some discovery of some new uh, 
epithermal mineralization at the ace galena and the um the kitzel uh vein could you talk to us about those two different um veins yeah those those uh those areas um are are uh, targets on the property that have a limited amount of drilling, but they do have some high-grade hits. They are not currently in a resource, so it gives you a sense that we are uh, have a property that has uh, showings and has drill holes that could be expanded to build a resource on the Dolly Varden. The uh, the Kitsall is in the central part is of the of the project, and it's not very far from the Musketeer and the Torbert deposits south of uh, the Wolf deposit. Wolf, Torbert, North Star, and Dolly Varden itself all have a resource. East Galena has some excellent hits, but it has not yet had an, enough drill holes put into it to do a resource estimate. So, but these are future considerations. And your group that you've been working with has been in the silver sector for some time, and you've had a lot of success. Um, talk to us a little bit about the group that you work with and some of the background and the success stories that that you've been with that you've that you've accomplished. Uh, it's been a, a terrific group. But when I I left the university uh, where I was uh, teaching at Queen's University in geology to join this group in uh, based out of Vancouver, but we've made discoveries in several countries. Um, one of the notable discoveries is the uh, La Preciosa silver discovery in northern Mexico. In that case, we took a, a small company and a prospect that did not have a resource on it, and we uh, drilled it, we made the La Preciosa discovery, and then we brought it to the stage that it was a major uh, deposit and had two companies bidding for it. Eventually, Coor Mining purchased uh, Orco Silver, which was one of our, our group's companies, um, and that was, uh, that's like hitting it out of the ballpark. That was a, a great success for our team moving it from uh, zero uh, tons and grade in a resource up to a 265 million ounce uh, silver discovery. And that's just a great feeling, the adrenaline that flows when you make that kind of a discovery and you see the, the core um, with the mineralization, the veining um, appearing in the core boxes, and it's, it's a, just a great feeling. Ben, when looking at Dolly Varden here, what is, you know, what's so unique is the high grade and in a, a safe mining jurisdiction in Canada um, versus, I guess, so many other deposits that are found in a little bit riskier jurisdictions. What is it that brought you guys, your group, and drew your attention to Dolly Varden? Well, you, you are correct that uh, uh, security of tenure is an important part of any mining project where you have a legal system and a tax system and a mineral claim structure that you know what you've got. That's an important part in when you're considering any projects. But in this case, you're also looking at a very high-grade silver deposits. And uh, a higher grade gives you some flexibility when you're planning a silver mine. And so that's what uh, I like to see is uh, a deposit that um, is in the upper quartile of, uh, of the types of deposits that you're looking at. And so it, it gives you a little bit more flexibility. Um, and uh, you know, this, this fit all of our requirements with, with future targets, with an existing resource, with a stable jurisdiction. And we could put a team together that could uh, explore the property. And there's one subject that you haven't brought up yet, um, is the relationship with the local communities. Uh, we have started that process as well. And we fit within the land of the First Nation of the Nishka people. And Nishka is one of the, uh, the only settled treaties that is in British Columbia's jurisdiction. Uh, and they are very pro-business. Uh, so we have hired um, a lot of workers from the local community uh, to participate in our project and making it a win-win situation. 
Ben, as we conclude, could you highlight some important developments going forward that my subscribers could look forward to? Well, in that the drilling just started last week, um, it usually takes about uh, uh, six weeks to do a drill hole, and we would normally do a handful of drill holes before we make an announcement. But what you can look forward to are a series of announcements of drilling results coming out of the Dolly Varden project. We also have in our group um, in Dolly Varden uh, a project that's a little bit to the east, and that's called Big Bulk. And Big Bulk is a little different. It's a porphyry copper deposit. The next stage for that will be uh, doing a geophysical survey. And the government geologists from the BC Geological Survey are mapping in that area this summer. So we are assisting the uh, uh, provincial survey in their mapping efforts, and we will have access to that data as well. That's on the big bulk copper gold porphyry system. It's about five kilometers to the east of Dolly Varden Silver. So there will be a lot of information coming. It will come in blocks uh, throughout the summer and into the fall. Ben Whiting, Vice President of Exploration at Dolly Varden Silver, which can be traded as DV on the TSX Venture and as DOLLF on the US OTC. You can get more information on Dolly Varden Silver by going to dollyvardensilver.com. Thanks, Ben, for being here with us today and for giving us a brief overview and some insights into Dolly Varden Silver and the people running the company. You're very welcome. It's good to hear from you. Thank you.